Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. Welcome back to Silicon Angle's live water wall coverage for three days from the OpenStack Summit here in Vancouver. I'm Stu Miniman and excited to have with me Awais Namat, who's the co-founder and CEO of PlumGrid. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for inviting me, Stu, here. It's a great, lovely day in Vancouver. It's sunny. Oh, nice. uh, yeah. I, I, I can't imagine a better place to come to an event, even though I think a number of us were saying we want to be outside. Lunch was outside overlooking the harbor, but you know, we, we got some tech to talk about here. So, um, you co-founder of the company, can, can you give us just kind of the quick 30 second, uh, you know, what helped bring you to you know, co-found PlumGrid and you know, what's the company's mission in life? You know, it's, it's great to actually have be on the show today. Uh, you know, um, Believe it or not, I was walking in and I just realized that it was the fourth birthday of the company. It was incorporated on May 18th, 2011, right? So we are a four-year-old company. We're starting our fifth year. We provide networking in software. If you've heard of overlay networking constructs where you do multi-host networking right out of, the, out of the Linux kernel itself, that's what we do. We specifically focus on OpenStack. And what we do is we, uh, we make uh, OpenStack enterprise ready. And wow, that, that, that's an audacious goal. Uh, we, we've actually been digging yeah. in. Uh, last year, one of my big foundings uh, from, from the show in Atlanta was uh, you know, compute, rock solid. Storage mm -hmm. in really good shape. Yeah. Networking needed some work. Uh, and it's an area we, we've been you know, digging into and unpacking today. Um, by the way, thank you, your, your folks, for the five-year pin. Yeah. Uh, you know, five years, you know, from a technology standpoint, a lot has changed, but you know, most big, heavy projects take, I mean, you know, usually a decade to mature. So, a uh, big audacious goal to say, you know, make networking enterprise ready. Uh, you know, where are you today, and you know, how, are, how far are you along that journey of meeting kind of the mission statement? So, we are in fact taking uh, some of our customers to production. Uh, some of them are public. We have been announcing um, Swisscom as one of our early you know, customers that use it internally, externally, as well as you know, their public service. If you go to developer.swisscom.com, it's an OpenStack cloud that runs on PlumGrid today. Uh, we have also announced a uh, communication as a service use case with Interactive Intelligence. Great customer to have. Uh, if you know about communication as a service, it's kind of like messaging, voice, PBX, everything that an enterprise would need for their communications need, all hosted in one place, right? So wow. okay, so I, you know, I, I think back, I actually yeah. worked in telecom back in yeah. the 90s and you know, saw the writing on the wall that voice over IP was going to kind of mm -hmm. kill the traditional voice, so is this kind of the next generation of that? Help connect the dots. So this is something, you know, think about it. It, it is a uh, large enterprises like Kaiser Permanente or Intuit or LifeLock or other place, you know, customers like that who want to host their own communication solutions. They don't want to give it out, right? But they want it done internally in a hosted environment, right? Um, completely isolated. Interactive Intelligence uh, is one of our customers. Uh, they provide that service, right? Uh, end to end, they will build up in a hosted communication solution uh, for their end users and customers. Uh, and they used to do it all in hardware, using these pieces like routers, firewalls, switches, all in hardware with racks of servers, all put together, 70 touch points of configuration. And they, they thought that you know, it would take them four months to do it, right? And, that, and they, they decided that it's time to change their infrastructure and make it more automated, and it chose OpenStack for that. But as you know, uh, networking in OpenStack is not easy. It's extremely hard, and this was a networking specific problem. Uh, they wanted to make sure that all the things are automated, completely provisioned, so they, they used PlumGrid for it, and by using PlumGrid, they could actually reduce their service provisioning time from f four months down to 15 minutes. It's literally a bunch of scripts that they had to write, service templates, fire it off, and here you go, a complete customer is fully provisioned. Okay, C can you kind of unpack for us a little bit how you fit into the stack? So my understanding, you guys are not a distribution for OpenStack, you're, you're partnering with a number of the companies there. How, how does your solution fit into the overall OpenStack picture? So if you know about uh, OpenStack, for the viewers who, who don't know much, uh, there is a compute piece, there's a, there's a core infrastructure, storage, and networking. The networking piece is called Neutron. We provide uh, I would say secure, scalable, and automated solutions for the Neutron piece of OpenStack that go above and beyond what Neutron can, can do at this point in time. 
that's where we fit in. That's our core op, you know, product offering. It's called Open Networking Suite for OpenStack. Uh, what we do is we integrate into a very broad set of uh, distributions. Today we announced, uh, you know, uh, with uh, with Huawei, uh, the, with, that we integrated with Huawei Compass as an SDN solution. Right. Uh, we have announced with uh, Rackspace, uh, Rackspace 10, that we are we are integrated over there. We are integrated and certified for Red Hat OpenStack, you know, starting OpenStack 4, 5, and now 6, which is Juno-based. We are one of the first ones, uh, networking solution that got certified, uh, I would say, I shouldn't say certified, but it may, you know, got integrated into Kilo release. Uh, many of our contributors are um, uh, contribute into the Neutron project directly into the OpenStack.org. OpenStack okay, so if, if you were to, uh, you know, we, we sometimes like to talk in uh, sports analogies here on theCUBE, uh, you know, four years in, networking, you said, isn't the easiest today, you know, where are we for making this, you know, just generally something that customers can adopt from the network standpoint? You know, are we, are we past the warm-ups, are we a couple of innings into it, or, yeah. you know, are we in the home stretch and we're going to be able to close out this game soon? No, I think it's still, still early, yeah. even in four years, uh, people need to understand that the infrastructure takes long, and four years is pretty much not much, you know, in the, in the infrastructure life cycle. Many things have happened, many good things have happened already. Um, we, are, uh, uh, we, are, we, are, we are well into it at this point in time, but enterprises are just starting up. So if, if you know that people would call OpenStack is a project, not a product. Uh, you want to build an OpenStack cloud, it will take you, you know, six months long project to actually get it up and running. And that's why it was mostly popular in, in service provider space. That was 2014, if you need to see the big names or Comcast and AT&T and Swisscoms, people who wanted to build these large public clouds, it was a great technology for that. I think what, what's now started to happen is it has started to go into enterprises and there's a lot of work, there are a lot of missing links that need to be put in place before it's entirely enterprise ready. But the good thing is some early enterprises are adopting it, they're deploying it and use cases as cust you know communications as a service are coming up along with other use cases that we have seen. All right, so so you talked about Swisscom and a couple of other your customers there. On the stage this morning we saw you know Walmart talking about kind of a global use yeah. case. Uh, can you take us inside custody, you know, the conversations you're having with customers? What is kind of the business problems that they're solving? What are the early use cases that show great promise for OpenStack and, and your solution? So, uh, it started off mostly as a, as a dev test or DevOps kind of a use case, right? Whereby, uh, hey, look, I, I want to get these things up and running. I'm developing a few applications. I need some infrastructure for it. Uh, OpenStack seems like a good way to put a scrappy infrastructure together. Uh, let's go start using it, right? Um, that's where the things were maybe two years ago and a year ago, right? And things have moved you know, significantly you know, from over there. We are now seeing production use cases where you know, real life traffic for a lot of commerce uh, of hundreds of millions of dollars worth of commerce, a billion dollars worth of commerce is being transacted over infrastructure that is powered by OpenStack. It is now, uh, uh, yes, Walmart you know, showed that they ran their last shopping season over it, right? Uh, we see those applications not only within uh, within uh, within a you know a retail sector. I would say uh, we see them within software as a service providers. They're you know putting uh, OpenStack as a backend infrastructure. We are seeing this more importantly in a new uh, new kind of application infrastructure, which is built around say a PAP platform as a service layers like Cloud Foundry. One of our produ uh, production deployments, in fact, quite a few of our production deployments are around scaling and securing Cloud Foundry on top of OpenStack. Uh, one thing people need to understand is making it enterprise ready is a lot of it has to do with security. And a lot of the security today resides in many of those hardware and physical components that surround this, 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 this mushy infrastructure that is done in software. Yeah, so, so absolutely. We, we've talked to a number of the startups as well as you know, the big companies as to how security is changing. Uh, in, in some ways, it's, it's the conversation we've been having for at least over a decade in, in, in my uh, world. You know, how's PlumGrid helping there, uh, both yourselves and through your partnerships to kind of change that security discussion? Well, security is fundamental to networking. If you think yeah. about it, networking had multiple roles. Um, it's, one is to actually transport the bits from point A to point B. That's very easy. You can do it with any networking you know, solution. The harder piece is enforcing policies, making sure who can talk to who, uh, isolation, uh, access control. 
uh, compliance. And that's where networking is fundamental. Firewalls are on, on, on a net networking primitive. Load balancing where traffic goes or not are a net networking primitive. Uh, VLAN separation for PI, PCI, DSS compliance, right, are a networking primitive, right? So networking is fundamental to security. Uh, what we do is, as, as this uh, hardware-based infrastructure is moved to this software, like OpenStack, all these services which are security and networking related are still in very much entrenched hardware. We have lifted them up, turned them into software, and brought those into, into the OpenStack using our uh, platform, which is Open Networking Suite for OpenStack. What we do is we provide these secure virtual domains that gets associated with these projects. Soon as you spin up a project in OpenStack, it creates a secure virtual domain which has a very well-defined perimeter. Uh, it has access control policies associated with it. You can chain them whereby these multiple secure virtual domains are, some of them are under InfoSec control, others are under tenant user control. You can auto-spin them, auto-scale them, and it kind of puts together that, um, that environment that is needed by enterprises to make OpenStack operational. All right, so as a startup, how, how do you manage that? You know, you've got the big companies like Cisco and VMware tend to have these big megaphones that can really kind of drown out a lot of the discussion that's happening in the marketplace. The whole software-defined networking yeah. space, I mean, you got ACI on one side, you got NSX on the other side. Uh, how, how do you reach the customers? How do you kind of get beyond some of you know, the marketing speak that's going on? So we, uh, we're a small company, yeah. right? Uh, we think ourselves as you know, too small to actually go ahead and compete with these, these, these big giants. We think our job is to make customers happy and solve solve their problems, right? And that's what we do. So what we have done is we actually have focused on very large customers, uh, large customers who have you know significant volume of the needs where we can go in, start solving their problems, and they can start replicating it across you know multiple um, mul multiple uh, use cases. Uh, moreover, uh, when we started off, we thought that partners are essential and fundamental to uh, to getting our technology proliferated, right? So we partner. Um, partnership is core, core to us. We announced, uh, you know, partnership with Apollia. They are one of the system integrators for OpenStack uh, out in France and Switzerland, right? We just announced a partnership with Nebulu, uh, which is again a, a one of uh, the early team that did Mercado Libre. Uh, OpenStack deployments, and they are now a service uh, systems integrator in South America. Uh, we have a you know nice partnership with the NEC Systems Integration Company in Japan. We have partners in in US. Uh, Onyx is a great partner. In fact, we are having a panel over here. Where many of our partners are there. So we think it's an ecosystem play. We think it's a uh, it's a it's taking the product to enterprises play, and that's where partnerships are extremely important for us. All right. Uh, so, w w what's your opinion on it? We're, you know, we're five years into OpenStack. You know, how much do the, the the users and the small companies are able to innovate? Or you know, th there's some criticism sometimes that the big companies come in. You know, there's hundreds of people from some of those big brands. You know, you're a former Cisco person yourself. I'm sure yeah. you can see the presence here. Uh, you know, wh wh what's your assessment on OpenStack? I would say you know, OpenStack uh, five years rapid development. I think there's a lot of development that has gone in uh, every six months. New code new features, <coughs> uh, and I, I think uh, given that momentum, it was only natural that large companies would come in and try to steal the thunder in the show. Um, yeah, and many have you know, you know, come in, but I think they also contribute. We all have to, re to recognize uh, they have a lot of experience in operationalizing these constructs, um, and they have done it before, right? So they have something to contribute over here. I think where we are as OpenStack today, uh, uh, when we go to customers, especially our customers, we bring them these features and they see it. I think uh, the focus for, from them has shifted more towards operationalizing those rather than keep innovating more and more. So I think um, this uh, renewed focus within the open OpenStack developer community, uh, and especially within the foundation board, to define what is dev core, which is core OpenStack, so that it can remain stable and it's always compatible and there is no, that compatibility is never broken moving forward. It's a great initiative, right? Especially for enterprise adoption and having the context around it, right? With the big tent initiative whereby people can go ahead and um, uh, innovate and keep adding more features. I think that kind of a separation is the right, uh, right, right move in the right direction. All right, so you know, I usually ask my guests, you know, what brings them to this? Obviously, your company, you know, heavily focused on OpenStack. What excites you about this event? Uh, what are you looking to gain out of the, the, this week? And uh, you know, if you look back at the end of the show, what do you hope you've you, you've gained? Oh, we want to see a lot of customers over here who are, who, are, who are interested. We were there in in Paris. It was around 4,700 people over there? 4,500. We've been in the OpenStack show as a, as a company. We've been coming in for quite some time. It's a great show, 6,000 people showed up, right? We are looking forward to having a lot of 
you know, customer contacts. We have 11 sessions, you know, over here. Um, we have some uh, forward-looking technologies that we are demonstrating, like Docker's and uh, Docker's networking. Um, in fact, we're networking with Docker containers and virtual machines and physical servers all at once, right? We already have a solution, you know, out there. Uh, some of our customers are experimenting with it at could, this could point Could you speak a little bit more to that, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of the the biggest uh, you know sessions uh, you know here. I know the rooms here are a little uh, little small. Uh, I think they can fit more, mostly 300 people. I think the registration is registration is more than 400 at this point in time. Uh, we'll, you know, I would I would might invite everybody to go take a look at that session. All right. So if people want to find out more yeah. about PlumGrid, you know, how, how do they find out more, and what what would you recommend they start come, with? Come over to our booth. Right. Mm -hmm. We have quite a few, uh, you know, mar in collateral that is available, you know, for everybody, and uh, we have some live demos over there that All if right. you're interested. Yeah. In the, and the website is PlumGrid.com. Do you have a special thing? Uh, is the container information going to be posted online? Or? It's the container information is online. Uh, there's a there's a session of container networking here. Um, I, I don't have the information with me, unfortunately, what exact time slot it is, but it's by, it's by Fawad Khalik, who's, a, who's a one of our uh, Neutron uh, developers. He's the one who's presenting. He'll be doing the demo, and anybody who needs more information can drop by our booth. We can show the demo live. All right, well, yeah. Awais Namat, uh, co-founder and CEO of PlumGrid, really appreciate you taking time to share with our audience what's going on. Wish you the best of luck at the show and, and going forward. And uh, we will be right back with lots more of our coverage here from OpenStack 2015 in Vancouver. Stay with us.